Greetings and welcome to a new video about control system topics. We continue with an, another tuning method using Cohen Kuhn tuning rules. We have discussed in another video using the Ziegler and Nichols tuning rules. This is a different method and we will also describe how we can design a PID controller also using this method. Of course, we will work out everything step by step in our calculation, also verify these in MATLAB simulations. So let's look at our situation and before we move on, I will of course first want to discuss the method briefly. The assumption and the condition for this method are the following. It is based on open loop concepts and relying on a reaction curve. So it is only for open loop. And it's suitable if the system has a large delay, let's say a transfer lag. And it is also relative to the open loop time constant. For example, if your open loop time constant is one second and you have a large delay, let's say eight or 10 seconds, then this is a suitable method to use. Now it is only used for first order plus a delay time systems and it is given by this FOPDT. So you need a first order system and it has also a delay. So that is actually given here. So we have, uh, let's say an input, the plant, which we don't know yet the transfer function and there will be a response. It must be sort of an overdamped system looking in a second order configuration. You can see here that S shape response, which is given here in a black bold line. This line here, which is called the tangent line and it must be then set up in this point which we have a difference in our slope in this response. Now in this response we will then first uh, apply a step input such that we get actually this response. So it must be applied. Bef uh, first you need to have a steady state condition in your system and then you apply actually your step input. That is mandatory. And then the step response that is the output will give you the required parameters for our controller design. Now we have the delay time, which is given here in L. That is how much delay there is before the uh, curve starts to increase. And there is also a time constant and also a DC gain, which is given by KDC. Now, if you have a unit step input, the KDC is equal also to the value which you, which you have. But if you have, for example, input which is not a unit step, for example, you have an amplitude of your input is not one, for example, 20, and you calculate what your steady state values of your out output signal, then you need to divide that by 20 to get the actual KDC, which is a DC gain. Now, let's look at the steps also. The, for this st uh, method, the steps are the following. You ensure the process, your plant, has reached the steady state condition. Second step is you apply then a step input that is in the input of that plant. And then from the response here, you determine the delay time, time constant, also the DC again. So you determine three parameters from the response. Now the final step is determine the controller that could be a P, PI or PID parameters from the response parameters which we have determined in step three. Now this can be determined the parameters for the controller using a table. So let's also discuss that. Now there is a procedure and we obtain of course experimentally what we have of our plan. So we don't know yet what the plant is. So there will be some transfer function and it could be a S shape as discussed before, but there must be some thing you need to consider there must be no integrators and also no dominant complex conjugate poles. If there are any complex conjugate poles, this response could have an overshoot and this, is, this method will not be valid anymore. Now, s shape curve can be then characterized by these three parameters as said before. Now, the transfer function of your plant will be then the output divided by the input. So Y over R, which is then in the Laplace domain, and it can be approximated by the first order system in cascade with the delay or the transport lag. And this is then given by this, so G1, which is, let's say, the first order transfer function model. You can see that the KDC and also the 
t which is our time constant specifically only considering the first order system if you consider also just pure delay this is given in laplace domain by e to the power minus ls where l is your delay in seconds and the time constant also here is in seconds so if you cascade this you get a complete response transfer function of your plant which is then the first order system pure first order system in cascade with the plant uh, delay which is in total the to uh, complete plant transfer function that's shown here okay now let's now look at the parameters for our pid controllers now this is given as the pid controller transfer function general expression you can see the kp which is the proportional controller gain ti and also the td which is the ti is the time constant for the integrator part and there's a time constant for the derivative part so you can all show here so derivative time constant integral time constant for proportional gain so we need to determine these three if you want to design a pid controller now the control parameters are set according to the formulas in the table and using these parameters from the response and this is the table so if you want to for example have a controller which is pid then you need to for kp use this formula and you see there's a t l and also the kdc there's three parameters are here so we need to first determine that from the response and then use this formula to determine the kp similar for ti and also for td that's actually all shown here you can get in the literature a different uh, let's say expression for these values i have sort of change that to see that in a little bit easier way otherwise you get a fraction and a fraction which is a little bit difficult to read so i have actually rewritten that and came up with these expressions i think this works better and much uh, easier okay now let's now look at an example and using this table and also the quen kuhn tuning method now we have now a unit step response already said it is a unit step input and the response of an open loop system g s is shown here and we will like to use this method cc method for short to determine the pid control transfer function again this transfer function is given so we have three parameters this is a curve now let's see what we can recognize from here so let's look at solutions we need a delay time time constant and also the dc gain now here we have the delay time this is from 0 to approximately 1.8 seconds this is all in seconds so it is then here in the, uh, the l which is then our delay time now we want to draw a tangent line after the delay time so we can start here let's say the beginning of our increase and then find the time constant so let's do that before we do that let's also determine the steady state value which is four so for this red response so the tangent line goes like that so it is tangent at the origin value here after the delay and you can now determine also the time constant by making a vertical line which intersects this blue and this dotted green line and then going down you see approximately 3.9 so the delay after the delay you get your time constant which started 1.8 and goes all the way to 3.9 seconds and that is t and that is then in this case 2.1 seconds this is by the way an open loop unit step response okay and this is our the brown line is actually our unit step input so we get for one as an input four as a steady state value for our response in this red line so from the unit step response we get the following delay time is 1.8 seconds as already mentioned and the time constant is 1.2.1 seconds because in, you must do 3.9 minus 1.8 and your dc gain is 4 over 1 because it is a unit step input if this was for example 6 then what you must do 4 over 6 that must be your dc gain now the plan transfer function was given in the model like that this is the cascade of a pure first order system and a delay kdc l and the t we have determined so we can just substitute the values and we have this expression this is now the transfer function of the plant so this is actually our transfer function for the plant and we have done actually this step now let's move on and also 
determine the PID control using this CC method, CC table. Now this is a table and you can now also look at the PID controller part. So Cohen Kuhn table will give you the values since we have the LT and also the KDC. Now KP is 16T plus 3L over 12 L KDC. It's all here. So you substitute values we have 2.1 for T, 1.8 for L and also 4 for KDC. You get 0.4514 approximately. So I have actually chosen to use this much accuracy. Now TI, just look at this expression, TI. You substitute the values for L, T and you get 3.367 seconds. Okay, TD in a similar way, you get this expression. You substitute in here your values for L and T. So you can actually see for TI and TD only use actually L and T. For KP, you actually use all three values from the response. Now you get 0 0.5663 seconds. Now we have everything. And now we can set up actually our transfer function for the PID controller. And this is all from this part of the table. Okay, now let's set it up. This is from the table. This is from our response. Now we can set up our transfer function of the PID controller. Now KP is here. TI is shown here and TD is shown here. So you can see this is transfer function. Now we can rewrite this so that it's easier to read what, is, what are the poles and also the zeros. If you do the, let's say the couple of steps in between here, I will leave the details out. I think it is straightforward. You will get this. You see there are two zeros and one pole, one pole at the origin. So two zeros of our PID controller, which is at minus 1.388. The other one is at minus 0.3779, all here. And there's a pole at the origin. And there is also a constant here. Okay, now let's also look at now the situation further. We need to, of course, use a closed loop configuration. This is now our PID controller we have designed. This is the original design. This is our plant and we cascade them and you use very simple unity gain feedback. I would like to have this I Y value, I mean, as nice as possible. So not that much overshoot and also not, not, that, not very slow. So let's see if that is really doing the job and, and apply again a unit step input here. So let's look at it. Simulation results. We first start with a unit step response of our open loop configuration. So there are no controllers involved, just the plant. This is just the plant, G. You can see the following just for a check. This was our transfer function. And you can see here 1.8 actually was our delay. This is actually the 3.9 after that delay. So you can see it is 2.53 as the amplitude, which is 63.2% approximately of the final value. That is also another way to determine the tau or the time constant of a first order system. So you go from 1.8 to 3.9, that is 2.1 seconds exactly as in the transfer function. There's also a steady state value, final value of four also shown here in the transfer function. That is verified. Now let's also look at a unit step response in closed loop configuration with our designed PID controller. This is what the response then look like. And this was our transfer function we have determined. And this shows not that uh, nice response because we see our overshoot of 56% approximately, very, very high. Of course, the final value is one. And also the delay is clearly seen of 1.8 seconds, but this over to the 56% is quite high. There was of course no specification on the, uh, let's say over overshoot or settling time, anything. Just want to have a nice response. So let's see if we can tune the parameters of our PID controller such that this overshoot is much nicer. And that can be done by adjusting the values here for our PID controller. You can adjust, for example, this. You can make this larger or smaller. You can adjust one of the zeros and see if you can manage to get this over to much smaller. So I have tried to select one of these zeros and make that uh, in a, in a different value. So I've lowered actually this 0, 1.388 to 0 0.7, approximately two times smaller. 
So there is a tune PID controller and this is now, so I leave this second zero as it is and also this constant and also the pole at origin. And I get now the second PID controller, which is our tuned PID controller. This is the close-up uh, response, by the way, unit step response. Now you can see the overshoot is approximately zero, 0.0856%. So you can say it's almost zero. So this is much, much, much better than the first case. So this is not really a surprise, actually. If you do a use tuning methods like Zik or Nickel or Kuh and Kuhn, it's not a surprise that you get, a, let's say, a nasty response in the first case. So it's not always first time right, almost not uh, never. So you always need to tune after this first step your controller again to get a much nicer response and this is better much better than this response of course you can increase it further you can play around with these numbers and they get a much much nicer response but this is a way to make your response much better when you have the first original controller designed and then tuned after that using just one parameter all right, guys, this was our example about using Kuhn and Kuhn tuning rules for designing a PID controller. I hope this clarifies the situation for you for this specific tuning method. You can also look another video on our channel where we use the Zikler and Nichols for also tuning a PID controller. The video link of that uh, video is also given in the description of this video. See you next time in another video. Take care.